Hey, welcome back to Custom Model Connection. So today we got that 04 Suzuki Firenze we're going to be doing the power steering pump on. A good tip as a mobile mechanic is what we usually tend to do, or at least a lot of the mobile mechanics I know, is before we go to a job, we kind of get a feel for what we're going to be doing to the car or the truck or whatever it is. And we look up, uh, you know, the process or like where like the alternator is located and stuff like that. Or at least I do because we work on all types of makes, all types of models. We're not set to one certain specific car or brand. So I went ahead and looked up power steering replacement on this 04 Suzuki. And um, I noticed that there's not very, there, I couldn't even find one video on the power steering pump replacement. When I was at the vehicle and I diagnosed it and I gave the quote for the price, I kind of got a feel for what's going to be needed to get it out. But because um, there's no videos, I'm going to make this one a detailed how-to video or at least do my best to do that. Uh, I'm not sure if the customer is going to be there or not. You know, it's on their property. So we'll kind of see how it goes. But I'm hoping to make it as detailed as possible. If not, I'll cut some clips and then I'll explain what I did. And we'll go from there. Um, I'm going to also upload my other vlog um, upload that I had ready earlier today. So this is also going to be, you'll see it in the vlog, this part of it. But this is going to be a separate video of, you know, exactly how I'm doing it. So yeah, stay tuned for that video. Or keep a lookout for that video and stay tuned for the next couple of clips we're going to add in here. So we are here at the car. Uh, I went ahead and got the puller slash staller. We got the power steering pump and the automatic transmission fluid to fill up the fluid once we get it all done. And here's the pump we're going to be removing. So straight off the jump, sorry to move you guys around so much. Looks like we're going to have to take off this bracket right here, the belt. Um, there's a line here that we'll go ahead and have to get some pliers to get that off. Looks like there's a bolt back here. And so we'll start off with taking out these two bolts, that bolt and that hose. There's also a connector right here. We'll get that taken off. And uh, we'll go from there. Once I get all that off, I'll kick the camera back on. I'll go ahead and check out what sizes this was. And uh, I'll explain to you guys in a later clip what it took. Alright, so it looks like the first thing we're going to take off is the airbox housing. Or the filter housing. Looks like it's just held up by some uh, Phillips screws. And then it looks like a little clamp right here. So we'll go ahead and pop off these four. And then that clamp. So for the bottom piece, it actually looked like it was missing some screws, but it looks like it should be held on by at least two bolts. Uh, one will be located right here by the strut tower, and then the one would be down here at the bottom closer to the leg. But yeah, like I said, those were missing. Another thing I noticed was uh, the top right here for the intake, uh, it's held on with uh, some duct tape. 
So that's why I was being kind of extra careful when I was taking that off. I don't want to, I don't get any more tape. You know, I don't do things that way, so I don't carry stuff like that. So we won't touch it. Try not to disturb it as much as we can. All that, get all that out the way, then you can move on to the belt. It is a size 15, so the pump is going to be this guy right here that we're after. And then that's going to be the pulley to remove the belt. So yeah, we'll go ahead and get this removed. I'll see if I can prop you guys up so you guys could kind of see better where I'm at. Get you guys a better angle. Um, yeah, we'll kind of just see how it goes though. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and knock this belt off. And then we'll move on to the next step. Alright, so we went ahead and got the belt off. So this right here is actually what the problem is. It's a, a power steering pump, but right underneath it, not sure if you guys can see it. Right here is a... Um, Idle, idler tensioner pulley so if you get a 15 millimeter uh, wrench and you turn down uh, to your right because if you go to your left you're just going to loosen the bolt but you go down to your right you'll be able to loosen up the belt slip it off I just went underneath that way everything still ran pretty much correctly and then once I get this off I'll be able to flip it right back over so the next thing I'm going to tackle are these guys right here they look like 212's I may need a wrench to get into this one I'll go ahead and use a, a socket and ratchet for this guy right here. So we'll go ahead and get started on that. Like I said, it's just going to be a 12. And yeah, I'll kick back on uh, with you guys once I get those two off. And we'll go on to the next step. So cutting the video back on, uh, went ahead and just knocked that one loose. And then I realized that the holes in the pulley make it so it's actually perfect where you could stick a long 12 millimeter socket up in there. So we're going to knock that one loose, and as soon as we're done knocking that guy loose, right back here, let's see if I get a good view on it, right in here, there is another 12 millimeter socket. Um, I haven't really looked at the new pump, I probably should compare them, but we'll knock this out and then uh, we'll look at the new pump to see what other, I'm guessing they're held up all by 12s, but we'll see what other ones we're going to need to do to take off the pump. Uh, I went ahead and pulled out the new pump. This one's remanufactured. And it sits in there just like this. So, I'm going to go ahead and place this down. Hopefully it doesn't fall. It'll just destroy my day. There we go. Okay. So that was that bolt we took off that was over on top. So that's that bolt. This is the bolt right here that we took off on the top bracket. And if you notice, there's one more bolt that we got to take off. So this one's the one up top, so there's one up, down at the bottom. Top one, one right diagonal at the bottom, and this bracket. And that's what holds it up. So what we're going to do now, and I already got my uh, vice grips clamping down on the clamp. I'm just going to take off this hose right here that leads to it. Uh, let's see if maybe I can. I got it clamped down, so it should be pretty easy to wiggle up. You guys see what I'm talking about. So here's the clamp that I got out of the way. Uh, there's new O-rings that I'll show you guys out here. Well, I, I got the pump right here. So what I'm pointing at where the hose leads to is right here. There's new O-rings that will go into here. And I'll go ahead and get that once the pump is out of the vehicle. So now that I got that figured out, I'm going to go ahead and pull off the connector i'm going to check the whole pump make sure i got everything off that needs to be off looks like there's also a line right underneath the connector right there we'll go ahead and knock that loose and then i'll kick the camera back on um so so far all it took was a pair of vice grips a 12 millimeter uh wrench and socket or ratchet and socket and then taking out the air box and belt so yeah we'll cut back on in a minute and uh, once I get these off, and I'll tell you guys what size line fitting that is and what it's going to take to get all this extra stuff off. So, Alright, so I, sorry it sounds like I'm kind of rambling, but I just want to be detailed as possible for you guys. So I went ahead and got the connector off. What I went ahead and did was I used, because it's face down this way, and you got to pull this tab down in order to clip it off. What I like to do is I get a little flathead screwdriver right in between here. And I kind of pry down. Don't do enough where you're going to snap it off because these will snap off. And then once you get it down a little bit, I wiggle back and forth. Just like that. And then you pull out. 
and it usually seems to come out pretty good with the gasket attached and everything nothing gets stuck and bind so for that line right there that's right underneath it it's actually going to be a 16 make sure you got the right tool for it uh we don't want those to round off um i've had had them round off and what you run into is you're going to need to get like buy scripts or something to get in there. And you don't got enough room to really work with. Because I will show you already on this one. We're going to go this way. Put it right back on there. Look how close it's going to be to this connection. Yeah, you could take these off. These look like two tens and pull off the whole tube. But I want to get it out in one piece. And I think I can from right here. I could maybe even go up here at an angle. But these line uh, actual wrenches right here will make a world of difference so make sure you pick these up I think you can get them at AutoZone for like 10 15 bucks so yeah it's worth the investment once I get these off this pump should be out we'll rip it out of here you know it's a we could either get it out from this side or from up here so we'll just kind of see how it goes I'm guessing up here I'll let you guys know we'll cut back on in a second all right so we went ahead and got this puller slash installer from AutoZone that's going to be the part number and the way this works is uh we have these two little two little caps they will go in here there's like a little lip that they're going to hold on to they're going to bite into that they're going to need to bite into that really good in order to pull the old one off once you get that there you're going to put this ring over it so that's how it sits in there but what you got to do before you get to that point is you got to put this one this bolt that spins right in the middle of it all and if you've done that this is actually for a uh, Ford GMC and Chrysler but it will do the job for us on this one so we're gonna go ahead and throw the string over it I'm gonna tighten this bolt and then we're gonna start spinning it I went ahead and got a 13 16th to hold that down and it's gonna come in handy to go ahead and use this um, 16 mil uh, ratcheting gear wrench you know that way you don't have to keep taking it off putting it on it will actually ratchet on All right, so the way this works, this installer works, pretty much just this setup is all you need. Just this portion. What you're gonna wanna do, you wanna thread it on there till it bottoms out. It's about bottomed out right there. Um, we'll go ahead and snug that up. Make sure this is snugged up pretty good. And then we'll run this guy down and as you tighten this, there's some bearings in here 
as you can tell where that will spin freely and it'll compress it so we'll get go ahead and get all that figured out all set up uh, just make sure this is threaded in there pretty good and I mean kind of goes with that explanation you do that with the pulley on it you want to make sure it's seated you want to make sure this is seated real good onto the pump too you don't want it to go in and all pigeon toed or crooked I got a good flat surface right here on the gutter scoot you guys back yeah, so I got a good flat surface right here on the gutter that I'll go ahead and use and uh, we'll go ahead and get this done All right, so once you get that threaded on, once you get the installer threaded on with the pulley over it, this is all pretty loose. You're gonna need a 17 and a 14. So I got the gear wrench right here, so it's gonna be a little easier. You could probably use a socket and ratchet. That's what you got, that's what I'm gonna use. And what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna make sure that this 14 is snugged up pretty good at the bottom. By doing that, we're actually going to put some tension on the 17. Let's go ahead and snug the 17 up. Okay, that's the top of the top. And now let's go ahead and tighten up this 14. I went the wrong way, of course. Let's snug this up again. And then, actually... Okay, 14 is nice and snugged up. Now what we're going to want to do is tighten the 17. As we're tightening the 17, it will actually compress the um, pulley onto the pump. You want to make sure it's nice and straight. Before you get started, I'm going on this nice uh, solid surface. And I'm going to make sure it's as straight as it can be. So let's go ahead and get started. And they're actually pretty... It doesn't take much to uh, get them in there. This is why I like the ratcheting feature, because it'll go back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, it's working its way down on there nice. You're gonna want to you're gonna wanna check it. So you don't wanna figure out what's going on there quickly. You don't want to bore it. Yeah, it's getting pretty tight. Sometimes these have ridges and you know when to stop. Um, other times you don't know when to stop. You just got to fill. We're getting about there. go ahead and check it because it kind of felt really tight and uh, that's the case and we are good let's go ahead and remove this As you can tell, we actually got a little more to go. I want this to be flush with that Allen key. So we're going to go a little bit more. But it's always good to take it off and kind of know where you're at rather than go blind. So a little bit more work and we'll get it done. So we went ahead and got everything pretty much buttoned up. Uh, we just got to do like the lines. So the way we removed it was we had this 12 millimeter uh, fastener up top. The one down below, we were missing it. I'm not sure if uh, I recorded that or not. I went back and looked at the footage, couldn't find it. But if I find it, I'll throw it in. We were missing that nut we had to run out, or that fastener we had to run out and get one. And then there's two more 12 millimeters right here and right here. 
Um, you could just take off this one in order to get the pump off. I ended up taking both. You're able to get this one through the pulley if you do it that way. I just got it both just in case uh, I ha didn't have enough clearance to pull it out. I was able to pull out the pump from this side. Um, we went ahead and got our O-ring that was left. Put it. We put it on the actual line. Not sure if you guys can see it right down there it's right on the line we're gonna go ahead and snug that up with the 16 uh flare flare nut wrench and then we'll go ahead and put this line on the belt on and then we'll get sorry guys this is on a busy road as you guys can tell and then we'll go ahead and get this thing started up all right so i went ahead and started the car i gloved up it's a good idea to have these gloves on hand so when you get inside people's cars you don't get their interior all dirty but yeah i went ahead and started it uh so far so good the pulley's all nice and straight i'm gonna let it run for a little bit longer make sure these lines and these o-rings that i installed uh are not leaking um we went ahead topped it off we're gonna mess with the steering wheel a bit make sure that everything's good you guys can see right down at the bottom this was that old uh the old leak that was going on I guess after the bearing shot out it really wasn't doing it much pumping whatever pumping was coming right back uh, out of the reservoir here so I'm gonna make sure the reservoir is not leaking but that's pretty I'm pretty sure that that's what was going on there and we're gonna call this one a job well done